So here we are, playing Jaws of Victory, the first scenario called Conair Springs the Trout. This is by New England Simulations. I'm on turn three of this seven turn scenario. And turn three was pretty quiet for both sides actually. Um, the Russians have not managed to move forward further forward than Shapola because essentially the lead elements of this um, 29th tank um, were being were leaving the rest of the, the forces behind and they needed to wait for supply and the rest of 29th tank and accompanying sort of support from 20th tank to catch up they also needed um, they were also waiting for 18th tank which is now in here um, to 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 catch up I was going to put them in reserve but they were too far back to punch through any further breakthroughs they'd have had fewer movements so they needed to get in uh, into a point where they could catch up with the <coughs> lead elements before <laughs> before being in reserve would be any use of to, at all and they may be too far back to go into reserve here um, but I may be able to drive forward some some more with 29th tank and use 18th tank to to hold Spola. Um Yeah, and we've also got the uh, fifth guard cavalry that turned up, and again they were too far back, way back over here, to to actually get to the front line. So they're amassed in this area, waiting um, to see what use they can be put to. The only real fighting was here, where um, fourth guards army. Uh, was driving back rearguard elements of 380 German, 389th Division and the 57th Division who had been trying to pull back and in doing so they've made quite a breakthrough here and um, there are some uh, 72nd Infantry um, uh, regiments uh, and, and a battalion of engineers here and an infantry regiment here is kind of trapped behind Russian lines now <coughs> um, but there wasn't too much too much fighting because the the Russians were trying to uh, trying to get more forces up, up to the to the action, and the Germans were very much the same. Eleventh <coughs> um, Panzer didn't quite have enough movement to attack in force into Chipola, so they've just grouped south of Chipola, um, waiting for the opportunity to attack, and. Um, they were also released from the continuous front obligations along the Swamp and River line here. Well, semi-released, so what happens is that they still have to maintain that, but at this point, third turn onwards, any units not required to maintain that continuous front can then um, start uh, moving and engaging. So you can see a sort of line of um, 5th SS Panzer units here and some more up here and some more here. And then there's uh, some in here that have scooted up from this area so that we can base some supply in, up near this Coulson area and have 5th SS Panzer all being supplied out of a, a decent um, supply uh, distribution point. So, um, yeah, so both, uh, both Panzer divisions... Um, 11th Panzer, 5th SS Panzer were were trying to remanoeuvre. 11th Panzer had run in were, oh, had run into a bit of a brick wall and not made much progress against uh, Russian forces. And neither had 3rd Panzer, and I think some of these have got um, regroup markers or reorganised markers on them or something. Um, so yeah, not much um, not much happening along this front line. And I could have looked to uh, how we could pull back from this front and all these hedgehogs, but I mean, retreating from behind a streamline in hedgehogs into what would essentially be open ground doesn't look like the most sensible decision. So I've actually decided just to maintain this front here for now <coughs> um, and see what we can organize in this area in terms of defense um, and try and pull 72nd infantry and 57th infantry back and 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 shorten our line here somehow um yeah so that was turn three um went fairly quickly and and um yeah just a few combats um and now we're heading into turn four one thing i am fine with this game is the supply system is really nice um so putting down these mark, having to put these markers down each turn on a road and then 
and then work out you know from there where you can put them and with how many supply points and then whether that keeps all your your units in supply kind of front loads the supply question for each turn but once you've done it you've got a very clear picture of your supply situation um, and uh, uh, and also there's this kind of gearing where the further forward from your supply original supply point you put the unit the further away from that you're putting it the fewer actual supply points it's got to contribute to the action um, and that that all works really really nicely um, when I compare it with something like OCS, which is fiddly, it does work very nicely. Firstly, I mean, it does force you to front load a lot of the counting. So you're counting forward from the road and then you're seeing whether a particular spot on a particular road will then count out to the, you know, the units that you've got in play. And then you're doing more counting and working out how many supply points you've got. But having done that, you have a very clear picture for the turn and you're not then rummaging endlessly through stacks of counters for going, oh, I've got one supply point and three T here. And I thought I had more than that. I know a lot of OCS players keep their supply and sort of off to the side of the hex it's in. I find that confusing as hell as well. Um, but you're not trying to shuffle around, um, you know, shuffle around tokens um with trucks and all that kind of stuff and and it's just a bit slicker and easier and and um it it still makes road and rail very important and it still makes maintaining supply routes very important and it still creates that gearing between being further from your supply and therefore having less supply to to be effective um but it does it sort of sort of smoother and with far less mental overhead and the other reason for that is that everything's in units of one supply point you're not having to go well this is a x size artillery barrage so it's 3t and this is a it's it's no it's reloading artillery one supply point you want to attack support and attack one supply point so it's all in units of one thing um, and, and the counter shows you how many of those you've got and and so it works very well yeah like it um, you know I'm sure if I really thought hard about it I could find nitpicky reasons why why it didn't quite work and maybe I'll run into you know some edge cases where it seems a bit odd but right now the 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 the, the balance between <clears throat> fiddliness and overhead and 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 keeping supply as a genuine constraint on your action seems to be a seems to be really good to me so yeah <clears throat> enough of that i'm in going on to turn four jewels of victory um turn four and um i've done most of the russian turn here and up over here on the left side of this single map you can see the russians and this is the um, 29th tank corps has now captured this village and cut the road <coughs> they've also cut it taken this rail line so they've cut all possible routes from this supply point <coughs> um, by road uh, up to the uh, German 11th Corps up here so they are now having to be supplied out of uh, course and the course and depot and um, yeah that is um, pretty much the Russian objective secured because I think their victory conditions are around <coughs> are around securing this uh, this route through the German position and then there's additional victory points I think for these um, these towns through here Olshana and um, Vyaz, Vyazovok and Nosachev and stuff I can't pronounce these things and I can barely read the writing with some of the counters on them anyway um, taking this sort of uh, road through here I think is worth victory points for them or it could be up here it, m it might be all of it and got a dish here and stuff anyway never mind that they've pr completed their primary objective which is to cut this area of the German uh, army out of supply from this point and the supply points on the southern edge of the map uh, and it's now up to the Germans. There's much more of a, you know, burden on the Germans to do something about that. And although they've got a pounds of division here, a pounds of division here, and significant reinforcements still to come on, the reinforcements get progressively less valuable because they've got less time to 
to do anything. Um, <clears throat> we've got some out of hapless, out of supply Germans completely surrounded here, which were who are about to get a nasty shock as these two <clears throat> stacks get another attack against them with breakthrough markers. Some more out of supply Germans there, and with um, you know the advancing Russians, this um, supply through here is going to get more and more tenuous. And we've got the who are these guys? These are all in reserve. Um, Fifth Guard Cavalry Corps to go. And I was wondering what to do with this set of units. I've got two options. I could come down here and try and reinforce this because there's possibilities that the Germans could try and swing in and isolate this core here. Um, <clears throat> or, or they could come up and press through this gap here and try and come in try and open up a new sort of attack in this area and make it much harder for the, the Germans to push down from the north into this area and force them to try and push around here and of course that's that leaves them potentially exposed to having their supply lines cut since they're from coming from their supplies coming from down over here so if they try and push this way there's the uh, there's the risk of a Russian push <coughs> down into this road and into this area so <clears throat> they don't want to overextend too far up that way. We're going to try and stop them coming down here. I think I've talked myself into a bit more of an attack up through here. And <clears throat> we may even push very hard into this area and try and stop the Russians from feeling, the Germans from feeling they can drop down here. So that's the current situation. I've got to do these breakthrough attacks into here and uh, we'll have a one hex breakthrough move with this guy, which won't be very tough to do. I've got the reserves <clears throat> to move as best I can. <clears throat> and then we will be into the German response. One of the things the Germans will be able to do now that we've completely cut the supply is announce um, 11th Corps isolation, <clears throat> and that will allow them to retreat off the front if they so wish and give them a few more options. Um, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> so here in the jaws of victory, we're in the, <clears throat> we're in the German... Uh, phase of turn four and um, so a couple of things the first thing is we can now declare 11th core isolation and that means that we have to move the um, supply distribution markers for the uh, for the core to but to two of three designated hexes one of them I think is all of that's in here one of them I think is up here and there's one further up here which we won't use because there's a fifth panzer uh, supply um, up there that will deal with that with all those units <clears throat> so we'll keep them in this um, all of that area I would think but it does give all the German units in the core a one-off um, two hex movement uh, two hex move, um, which ignores zones of control and zones of influence. So they basically get to retreat away from the front first before we do anything else. And it also relieves the the requirement of a continuous front. So um, these are all now essentially free to move as they will once we declare that, which is what we're doing now. Um, the other thing is what to actually do actively against the, the Soviet incursion. One thing I was looking at was down here, there's a road running here. And this road is actually fairly important because it's the only road the Russians have got that's allowing um, supply to reach, you know, there. And supply reaching there is the only thing that's keeping this group over here in supply. So we're thinking well if 11th Panzer can push into this area and contest this road then we will start to see what the Russians are made of in terms of maintaining this <coughs> attack. However the difficulty with this is twofold. First 
just because these are out of supply doesn't really amount to a hill of beans unless we can put a viable attack into them as well and start exploiting the fact that they're out of supply um, to reduce their capability to fight and we've got nothing around to actually attack them with I mean we've got elements of 5th SS Panzer sort of dribbling down here but we haven't got anything that's going to sort of put a dent really in this group at the moment so we haven't got a fighting chart we haven't got a sort of a combat group to put them under any pressure cut them out of supply great they sit there on minimum rations and say that's fine the other problem is that as we push up in here there's a big gap in our own line in here now the um, the Russians aren't allowed to move or attack south of a certain point and it's quite important what that point is because if they can cut this road and this road then they could just turn the tables on us and cut all our supply which is coming from down in this area if they're not allowed to attack that down south that's a rather interesting element of the scenario design because that's telling us that we have to allow the Germans to stay in supply even though allowing them to stay in supply in this situation is vaguely ludicrous and you would expect um, 20th tank just to push down and cut these roads and say uh, uh, uh. Um, it says um, we may not Soviet units may not move or attack south of the line extending from hexes 28 37 to 43 37 and 43 37 is here so we can cut those roads we can we can come down here it's a line across here I'm um, uh, sort of level with Novo Mirgorod, Mirgorod, but we can push in here. So the other complication is if we cut Russian supply, great. They say, OK, we cut our supply. You can't do anything to us anyway. We've got nothing to attack us with. And we'll just sweep a load of units down through this gap here and cut all you out of supply. But I think the um, Germans have to force the issue, otherwise they're just petering out to a sort of defeat here. Um, so what we're going to do is declare uh, 11th Corps isolation. We're going to take our retreat move and we're going to then see what moves we can put into place to stabilise our position. And then we're going to start hunting around for some spare forces to contest um, this breakthrough. So we've got a lot of work to do as the Germans here and minimal supply to do it with. But... Um, yeah, that's the situation they find themselves in, and that's um, a, you know the real sort of knife edge situation that that makes it such a compelling situation. So let's go. So in the German turn here in Jaws of Victory, the um, 11th Panzer, because there was nothing creating zones of control, no infantry, only zones of influence. The 11th Panzer were able to push into this wooded road hex here and also uh, and then attack into this town of Lebedin which they did extremely su successfully causing two step losses one through the armour um, roll they had three white pips they rolled a two on their dice that caused a step loss on the armour the defenders and then a step loss uh, on a what was it started as a two to one attack and ended up as an eight to one attack due to all the um, modifiers, armor superiority, some artillery. They put their point, their only point of air support into this. The Russians did as well, but didn't get anything. They had combined arms. They had they had six steps of modifiers, and it, it all went very well. Um, so they've taken two hexes of the road here. Um, which is good for them. The downside to this plan is that they've realised, um, or that I realised, that the Russians actually have a, another road that runs up here and down here and around here, and that's been cleared largely by the sort of withdrawal of the 389th um, Infantry Division back here behind this um, streamline, because the you know the 11th Corps was pulling back off the line it was occupying here and has pulled back behind this stream and, and has then thrown up something of a you know a, a continuous line here um, to try and stop the collapse of their position 
Um, that's great, but it does it has ceded control of all of this road, which the Russians now occupy, and so they have a road line down to here, which then which then goes down that down across the river there and across there. So um, the 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 Russians do actually still have a, a viable way of getting supply in here, <coughs> um, but I suppose uh, you know pushing into the Russian position and trying to make it as hard as possible for them is the best best thing the Germans can do now and of course this you know this is looking very pinched here and the other thing that the Germans did was they started amassing 5th Panzer Division up here firstly in sort of semi in defensive positions so that they've got sort of key key lines of, of approach towards course and blocked um, and behind sort of river and streamlines, whatever the defensive terrain they can find, but also um, with a view to perhaps launching some sort of counterattack down towards these towns here um, and reopening <coughs> reopening the route from north to south. So um, yeah, coming into turn five, the Germans with um, you know a, a, what starting to feel like a more stable position certainly over here where we're kind of stabilized and the the weight of the Russian forces isn't quite so great but in this area we're actually able to um, start asking some questions and we also had enough troops down here to um, uh, enough um, reinforcements coming up and enough um, enough troops around to sort of block off any attempt for the Russians to push through down here and cut uh, the German supply lines up these roads so you know that's not a straightforward task f um, for the Russians if they want to try and do that because you know there's 14th Panzer and 11th Panzer and and other sort of strong armor units and things kicking around to um, uh, to hold to hold down here and we've got another big stack uh, of reinforcements coming in as you can see this is 10th Panzer uh, Grenadiers Division um, coming in next turn, I'm not quite sure where they come in, but no doubt it'll be from the south map edge somewhere down here, and that will give us an opportunity to push, to extend our line further up here and perhaps um, start contesting uh, the Russian control of this area. So yeah, interesting stuff. What I'm liking about this game is that though although the there are lots of obviously lots and lots and lots of individual counters on this map. Your, the the rules, the supply, um, you know, the the presence of these or lack of these um, s supply distribution markers and so on forces you to think about everything um, in organisational terms. You know, you have to you you, you haven't just got a truck doling out supply to anything near around. You know, you have to you have to keep your your forces grouped and that makes you think about what you're going to use um, groups of units for rather than just individual counters and equally it starts making you nervous if you've got you know bits of 20th tank here and bits of 20th tank over there you start thinking well this, this isn't very healthy you know so where you've got situations where where your defenses are kind of patchwork and fractured uh, based on different formations you start worrying about the vulnerabilities of that <coughs> um, and that's uh, that's quite a cool um, uh, offshoot of this supply system um, yeah which I'm enjoying a lot anyway um, coming into <coughs> turn five of seven uh, so yeah I think turns I think this turn uh, is likely to be fairly critical. We'll see what moves what moves get made. Be interesting to see how much pressure the Russians can put on up here, and also what they what they've got left in the tank to contest this kind of uh, pinching of their position. Because I don't think this this is very strong, uh, but they need to <coughs> they need to be able to get at it. <coughs> and attacking across rivers and streams is is quite difficult so um yeah the russians want to put pressure in here to open up more of their um open up more of their breakthrough again and the the, the germans are trying to compress the breakthrough and um yeah it's all in the balance